this? Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. Oh. What you have isn't enough. You need more firepower. A ranged weapon. Okay. You try to take comfort in the weight of your pry bar. Or crowbar. Or pry bar. Call it what you will. It doesn't stand a chance against military grade weaponry. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. Okay. Your fingers reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your pocket. I'm not sure I feel ready for this, uh, for what lies ahead. Um, sure. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. Thank you, Kim. Um, okay, so you say you want my gun in my hand? That's worrying. But, uh, am I right handed? Maybe, who knows? Um, what else could be of use? Um, do we have the bullet here? Oh, you've got two bullets, okay. That's not a lot. What do we have now? Holding the gun feels natural and satisfying. It's like an extension of your arm. The polished wooden handle almost fusing into your palm. I think my hand recognizes it. It reminds you of the day you first held it with fear and respect, hoping you don't have to use it in vain. The sun was out in Jamrock. It was so long ago. At last, the fastest hand in Revachol reunited with the slickest tool in the north. You're gonna be the envy of the town, baby. Well, let's see. I'm all out of shit to give, oh. boy cloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Oh boy. Um, I didn't think that was gonna happen today. Um, okay, let's see what we Put can do. Damn gun down. <clears throat> People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. Let's say nothing for now. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? Peaceful. It sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant points to the helmeted figure. This third one, he is the most dangerous of them all. Heavily armed. Uh, the big one is the mercenary at the gates, the scab leader. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. Okay. A sound strategy. He's the leader. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. We're out of time, this is... The Mercenary Tribunal. Alright, uh, stop, this is the police. Let's see what we can do here. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backwards. Big fuck! It's the only word you can make out. Um, I can see you're drunk. One wrong move and I'm taking you out. Easy now, no one needs to die here today. Or we could cross our arms. Um, easy now, no one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. 
We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. Oh boy. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand. Feels like it's saying, do it. Shoot him in the mouth. Shoot him before he shoots you. No, wait. It's good you have that gun. It really is. Just soften him up first. Present an argument. Okay. I'm barely keeping you together here. This is it. The big one. If you talk to him, he will rattle you, not the other way around. 83% chance. Um, thinking of an argument. 28% chance uh, to talk about the hanged man. Um, 42% chance to shoot a uh, coordinator. Uh, <clears throat> standing there quietly and hope quietly and hoping isn't gonna get us anywhere. I think I'm just gonna put one more in rhetoric and hope that that's enough. Uh... All right. Oh, Here thank we good. Go. Thank this goodness. Is an illegal tribunal. Krenel would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. You only have time <clears throat> for one argument. Choose wisely. Oh boy, just a question. Who's in charge of your unit after the death of uh, your colonel? Uh, Cronel does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. Um, you were called Downwell once. What happened? Uh, or gulp and say nothing. That's probably a bad choice. Um... Krenel does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal? Pops, you have no idea about the rights Krenel extends to us. Um... Okay, what rights are those then? If I fuck and kill you, hang you to that streetlight by your shit pipes, then that's called a necessary display of force. No one's going to give a shit about dead loincloths. <laughs> That's reality. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Okay. Now fire. Fuck them up. Do it. The muscles on your back tense up. Easy now. Tell them these men didn't do it. There's a peaceful way out. Um, okay, we now have a, um, more than 50% chance of shooting him. Uh, this one is not getting better now. Um, who is that? Listen, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Yeah, who did? Wait, I just... I just need a little time to figure this out. Um, it was someone else, someone who's not here now. How fucking convenient. Uh, he gives you a drunken stare, then puts his hand on the gun. His fingers are twitching. That's a draw reflex. He's about to draw. Um, he was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. You think I'm... Fucking stupid cop! Why don't I just shot one of your pals here, right now, huh? How about the kid? Tell me, he was a magic fucking sniper one more time. Hmm. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead court marshal won't decide who. Think, think. Why doesn't he believe me? Let's give it a shot. The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him all together. Titus said, we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud, in a public place. Uh, the Hardy Boys confess. 
The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him all together. Titus said, we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud in a public place. So, wait, they didn't confess? They didn't confess. You're lying, DePaul heard it. He doesn't move the weapon. He wasn't hanged. He was shot by someone in Martinez. They're helping us find the shooter. Um, the hanging was only a cover-up. Um, when they confessed they were lying, the hanging was only a cover-up. He pulls the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle of his gun. The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. Well, that's something at least. Honest. The man looks at his re uh, revolver and smiles. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. Okay. What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. This was a close call. Okay, um... We could still shoot him. Where's Classia? She can explain this. Who the fuck is that? Classia, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! The manager calls down from the balcony. Unarmed. Hunched. But keeping it together. What do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! We should have arrested her. Um, the lieutenant whispers, his eyes still on the armed mercenaries. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! Well, damn. Um... I don't think they care what the Wild Pines rep does at this point. I didn't know you had a third guy? Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer. Ho and Cloven. He doesn't talk much. I figured. All of you cunts inside out. Uh, what was that, Rude? The killer? Um. The killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. He points uh, to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. What do you think he does? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures. <clears throat> Nineteen. 20, 21. Um. If I say that, he's probably just gonna shoot me right in the chest, isn't he? Uh, he kills. Smart loincloth. He fucks natives up. Soldier of the apocalypse style. Um. The Wild Pines rep does not approve of this. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> um, we're working together. She knew uh, you're out of control, she told me. She's gone, you stupid fuck. Sailed off five minutes ago. She doesn't give a shit about you, silos. As you look to the bay, you see a small green sail on the horizon by the crumbling sea fort, growing smaller. Stay cool! Don't do anything stupid! Titus shouts to his men in the background. The company bitch is gone. The ladies cunt is gone. The ladies gone. Fuck are we still doing in this shithole? He looks around, tired suddenly, sad even. Guys, I, um... The little I guy... Get in the way. Oh. I don't even have a gun! Hold your ground! Any more of you run, i shoot you myself. We're doing this together. They huddled close in a formation. Still, the rest will stay. Even if it means dying here with him. Uh, you're all drunk. Look at yourself. Yes. So what? Um, your judgment is impaired. You'll re- Uh... 
You'll regret this? Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Mm -hmm. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. Uh, the outburst is accompanied by uh, yellowish saliva around his mouth. Um, seventy-two percent chance to just shoot Cortinaire. Let's give it a shot. There we go. A plume of smoke and fire erupts from the gun, and your hand goes numb from the explosion. Look through the smoke rising from the uh, barrel. Or look at Cortinaire. Let's look at him. There is a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes out as he stumbles backward, eyes filled with rage and disbelief, gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. His lips, moving, swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, but he can't. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. An Easter AR FA7, built for taking out light armored vehicles. It will devastate you. Um. Think? Or just try the reaction speed? Uh. It makes sense why we can't try that one again. Um, that could be something that gives us an opening, that could be something that seals our fate. Let's try it. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it. His eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. 0.6 seconds remain. There are six little black dots in the tip of the thick barrel, like a honeycomb. This is a knock cannon. It shoots six rounds in one pull of the trigger. Absolute destruction. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. He's drunk. Drunk fighters overcorrect. Move right, he aims further right. Get him to overshoot. That's a good idea. A full suit of armor can't be too. There we go. You can shift direction faster than he can. Now let's dodge the shot. You leap left. A swarm of open air passes mere millimeters from your side, tearing fabric off your coat. Feels like the lightest of tucks. Um, I'm alive. The man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke. For the next shot. We have to close in, right? Watch out. To your left. Nepal is about to take a shot too. At Kim. Oh. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly without trembling. He aims, face pale. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. An extremely difficult shot. That means we have to take her out. Two shots ring at once. Ah! From the lieutenant's pistol. And the other from Nepal's. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Okay. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. Oh boy. Uh, look him in the eye. The look of vengeance, framed in blood, lips shaking. This is the last thing he'll do on earth. But he will do it. He is your end. Here it comes. Death. Oh, that's not good. Well. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis 
explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Let's listen through the darkness and the pain. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! Um... Try to open your eyes? What do you... what do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Um... <clears throat> no one wants to do anything with me, no one wants to party with me. Uh... Of course I get gunned down and die, sorry, fuck. Uh, Kim, I lied about not remembering who I am, I made it up, I remember everything. Uh, there's, uh, there's a white shadow that smells like apricots, it's always there. Sure. Stay with me. Um... It said I have a vast soul. Do I have a vast soul? Yes. Keep talking. You hear me? <clears throat> Stay awake. Okay. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant. And the cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. No, Kim! No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are full of fear. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. Fall into darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. No, let me back into the light, uh, into the, the fight. fight. There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. Does that mean I live? And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and... Feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his wound sleep. There was a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. The engine of a caprice Kinema. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets... So what happens now? 
You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. Uh, Kim? Sunrise, a rebellion. The lieutenant says his middle... Uh, he's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room with the fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. Ouch. Um, the room, it's clean. Uh, ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to the Wamin pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. <laughs> okay. Dromine. Then it's not that bad. Neither surgical nor organ damage bad. But still, under the counter bad. The room, it's clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. <clears throat> it took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days. In and out. You've been up enough to take Dromine and curse. And drink water. Uh, the piss jacket, Kim. You took it off? Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. Okay. The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life choices. He's done with the jacket. Uh, what did you say? Sunrise? I mean, Parabellum means prepare for war. Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, okay. prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Okay. Isn't that written on your... My gun, it's engraved on it. It served you well. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. He looks out the window. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. Uh, good? Yes, we have also completely failed. But that's okay. Uh, what happened? What happened? You shot the Major in the face. A firefight ensued. Is he dead? Yes. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He missed, or you dodged. I dodged. Then I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. Glenn did not survive. There's a pause. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Eugene? Yes. He's still alive, too. You were bleeding out by then. I think you said something about your wife, and you warned me. I was able to disarm one of them, the pole, before she got a jump on me. Thank you. I killed her, and that's what happened. Okay. Um, uh, and they're all dead, all three of the contractors? Um, I thought you only smoked one a day. <laughs> this is the one. Uh, and they're all dead, all three of the contractors? The pole was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Why? Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... He breathes in the fumes, thinking. Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. How many casualties on the Union side, total? Three. Glenn, Theo, Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Theo, he was just too old for combat. And that's... All. Um, an absolute disaster. It's a total shit show, Kim. Not that bad, all things considered. Uh, I don't see how it could have gone any better. Oh, let's say it's an absolute disaster. Yes, officer. Seven people are dead. It's not a success. But what's done is done. <clears throat> the violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking, his hunched back. You have it worse. But he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your thigh. The outer side, thankfully, no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurocon. Can I walk? We will see. Okay. You won't be able to dance much. That's for sure. You should be able to live with limping around her. Um... Are you that? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. 
I tried to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. Um... Uh, isn't that strange? I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Um... Odd, you haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they are worried about you. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? Uh, better not agitate yourself further. Sorry. Um... If not my station, then who treated me? I did. Uh, thank you. No need. Okay, let's get up. Alright. I'm sure there were better outcomes um, to that whole situation, but, you know. Easy now. We were stuck for quite a bit, and I'm sure that cost us some valuable time. Uh, I mean, in general, if I had all the knowledge of the game, how it worked, how it functioned, I probably would have played some things very differently than I did. But that's the thing with blind uh, playthroughs, isn't it? That sometimes you don't make the optimal choices and have to, um, have to, you know, kind of work with what you have. And um, that's honestly part of the fun, isn't it? Uh, okay, the lieutenant turns double again before, you, uh, before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. Your balance is way off. I feel like you're about to fall over on that thing. How are you? Um, mm, my disco days are done. Uh, I feel fantastic. Let's rock. Who, care, uh, who cares? Who cares about me? It doesn't matter. I'm very bad, Kim. Things are very bad. Uh, my disco days are over. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Vifreiter. Uh, what happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. Um... You don't know? We can't talk to Everard. The harbour is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Joyce is gone? Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. He looks out the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Uh, wait, you've checked? Uh, she's really? Um... Guard confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else, outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. His voice is calm, matter-of-factly. Um, uh, this is because I'm a La Puta Madres peony, isn't it? Um, the fucking Maybells, Kim. The flowers. Uh, uh, what about the hole in the ouch wall? Someone was checking her out. The goddamn footprints. There's still a 28 percent possibility the shot came from a distance. There are all these old bunkers and weapon caches, revolutionary, uh, revolutionary er, um, era. It's simple, we have to locate communism. Communism killed her. Um, what, what about the hole in the wall? I don't know. That's been there for years. Uh, the footprints? Yes. God cursed the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Au diable. Uh, there's still a 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? Um, there are all these old bunkers and weapon caches. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Ravachol is full of them. Um, this is because I'm a La Puta Madre's pioneer, isn't it? Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Ravachol West are his pioneers. 
Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. Well, that's something. That does make some sense. The fucking Maybell skimmed the flowers. What? Um, yank it out to show the uh, dried flower while it falls to pieces. This one, remember? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to keep everything. He's wrong. <laughs> No, Kim, every piece of garbage in this city is connected to the case. Okay. Uh, he concedes, clearly not meaning it. Um, you know what I think about uh, solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard. Solving crimes is almost impossible. Solving crimes is super easy. Actually, I want to talk about this crime some more. Um, it's hard. It really is very hard. Um, you, uh, you're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The jar aluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold, a red thread on the roof upstairs, taut plucked like a string by the gust. Uh, we should check Clausius' room upstairs. Why not? He extinguishes the cigarette on the sole of his boot. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. All right, what do we have here? Date of birth generator. Oh, right, of course. <laughs> you were born in the year 07. In the last year of the Commune of Revachon, right before it fell in the old military hospital on the ground floor, where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. The revolution had about one year left to go, and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years ago. You are 44 years old. The bloating might never leave your face, but beneath it, you still have some years. You still have some hope. Uh, wait, what are the bonuses? Um, learning cap for logic, raised to four. Minus one difficulty to all physique passives. Oh, that's very good, actually. <laughs> I, I, yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's very, very good. Um, yeah, we can increase logic by quite a bit. Maybe we should, but again, I'm gonna keep one point around that might have saved our ass in some capacity last, well, not last night, uh, in the um, confrontation. Let's see. We could find out about that. Uh, inspect the window in Clausius bedroom. Okay. Oh, what's what's here? Oh yeah, right. The things were, uh, the things are fixed. The Stereo 8 player has been uh, reunited with, his, uh, with its right speaker. Okay, what does this thing have to say? The fan stands still. Okay, that's fine. We don't want to go to bed again. What do we have here? Look, the door is open. You can walk right into Kim's room. Oh. You see gleaming white enamel. No bottles inside. Okay, first of all... The bathroom mirror has been wiped completely clean. You see the reflection of your face in the mirror. Even now adorned with the expression. We could try for that, but I don't know if I want to spend a point on electrochemistry. Uh, let the mirror be for now. Um, if we get another point, I might just do that for fun. Let's go into Kim's room. Anything of interest here? What do you have here, Kim? Medicinal supplies in the cupboard. Uh, Mercura, chrome, a scalpel, something else. Uh, sorry, it took me a long time to read that medicine name. What do we have here? The alarm is set for 6.50 a.m. Okay. In the notes. These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. You make out notes on this and other recent cases. I had got opened the door to your room. You were running a low bacterial fever the first night. Um, 
thank you for keeping this thing alive for a little longer. Um, sure. It would have been easy were it not for my concussion. We both got lucky, considering the odds we faced. Let's go. Okay, sure. Um, let's go to Clausius' room then. Ah, we can't leave through here. Let's just go through that door instead. Through this door. And... Huh? Ouch, that leg hurts. Uh, maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay? Sure. What do we have here? More notes? Looks like she's left something on the table. Yeah, can we take it maybe? Next to the stack of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry, I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. A gift. The lieutenant turns to the staircase suspiciously, looking for any signs of another presence in the shadows above. What could this gift be? Uh... I am not drawing my gun. Yet. But I don't like gifts. He says he's not, but his hand moves instinctively toward his holster as he studies the note. Okay. Just don't walk into another radio trap, okay? Uh, seems she left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. You look at her rough, jagged handwriting on the note. She was in a rush, but not panicked. Deliberate. Focused. Okay. Let's see anything else in here. Just the medicine cabinet. So nothing new, really. Okay, what do we have here? A red thread made of nylon. It leads out of the room and onto the roof. Ah. Let's go to the roof first of all. The thread is tied to the antenna. Okay. Let's go inside and inspect the, vind uh, the window again. You see the same two neon lit shapes. A man and a woman. <clears throat> Only now a red thread bisects the room, pointing from the antenna outside to the cupboard on the wall. This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. The lieutenant tests the thread with his finger. Uh, drawn taut, it rebounds instantly. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside. A prime. To then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez. B prime. B double prime. And B triple prime. Where does the thread lead? It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime. Okay. The island in the bay. Uh, is she trying to tell us the shot came, uh, came from the, uh, the islet? Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna. That is where the thread seems to point. Um, there are ruins on that uh, islet, a sunken sea fort. I saw it uh, through the coin-operated viewer. I remember. He looks out the window and onto the bay. How did she know how to do this? She was there that night. She would have known precisely where the bullet hole was in the glass. That makes sense. She yeah. had a long time to think about it after, standing on that roof, staring at the glass. It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. The question is, should we trust her? Um, this is her way of saying she's sorry. I find that hard to believe. But at this point, what difference does it make? This is also the only point of origin we haven't ruled out yet. So it is. For a second he seems... tired. Um, you seem unenthusiastic. Uh, maybe we need to go to the island? Yeah, the, uh, that's not gonna work. There must be something else we missed. Um, you seem unenthusiastic. I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep these past few days. That's fair. He doesn't really believe this will yield anything. Maybe we need to get. Uh, we need to go to the island. <sighs> the lieutenant sighs, looking into the cold distance across the water. 
There, across the grey water, amidst crumbling concrete, a birch tree, and the half-sunken ruins of a flak tower. Um, I remember an anti-aircraft gun, or the ruins of one, on the island, from the coin-operated viewer. Could be the makings of a sniper's nest. He nods. Why not? Military fortifications are made for that kind of thing. Kim, let's go to the fucking island. I'm going to the island, are you in? Actually, yeah, let's not go to the island. Um, I'm going to the island, are you in? Of course, of course, I'm in. He takes a second to gather himself, then says... How do we get there? Joyce Smith here had a sloop, but she's gone. Um, Lillian, uh, Lillian the net picker, she's towering her boat. Ah, yes, of course, the village, let's go. Alrighty then. And I think I'm gonna do that next time, hopefully tomorrow. This uh, is very intriguing, but I have to get this edited and uploaded. So hopefully I'll, I'll find time tomorrow to do this. Um, yeah, goodbye.